All right. Welcome back to Vicenza Podcasts. Uh, today we have special guest, Brian Jansing. Uh, Brian, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Sean. Chin chin. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs> Um, so Brian, I was saying that, uh, you, you've been on a, a few of the podcasts, especially when I, when I, uh, I, I'm wasn't sure. Me. What? <laughs> wasn't me. It was, it was, <laughs> it, it, it's actually more about your, uh, years afterwards, I'd say, but they did kind of start in Vicenza. Uh, Skippy Goldstein shared a picture on, on the Goldstein podcast with you carrying a case of beer. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, things start somewhere. So. Uh, that's right. <laughs> right. Right. And then, um, you know, I, uh, I mentioned I've been paying the, the penalty for not knowing how good Italian micro beer is. So I figured I got not alone, penalty. man. You're not alone. There's so few people. Sorry about the noise. I got to say it out front. It's traffic. Now. It's fine. That's fine. It's all good. Um, but anyway, well, I'd love to, we'll get into that. I have some of our photos from a couple of years ago when we were in Roma. Nice. Yeah, so I'd love for you to share that part of the, the world in your life so that people can uh, have something to consider when they uh, visit um, and, uh, you know, yeah. get a chance to enjoy. Because, like I said, uh, Italian microbeer is like Italian food. It's delicious. So I couldn't, I couldn't answer any of Andrew's questions. He was trying to really, like, IPAs, what kind? This I'm like, look, all I know is they were really good. I don't remember. I'm like, Brian will probably have an encyclopedia for it. Uh, um, and uh, hold on a second. I got, uh, so let, I'm going to multitask while we're, while we're hanging here too, because I got a uh, possible guest drive by. Um, Wait. So don't, do, do me a favor. Give me, give me some background. You were Vicenza for from when to when. I made it to Vicenza in 86 and I started my freshman year right from the beginning and then I graduated in 1990 um, but I had I got drafted into the Italian military so <laughs> since I didn't have money for college I pretty much was stuck with having to join the US military so I joined the US Navy for four years because it was the only choice I had because we didn't have any um, reserve recruiter Navy reserve recruiters nearby. And my dad was too cheap to fly me to the States. So I ended up having to do four years. <laughs> yeah, um, already. I was, okay, tell me how you feel. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. It wasn't really what I should have been doing, but I did my job. You know, I, I like the idea of, of uh, mandatory uh, military. I mean, I just think it, it's a couple of years for the country. I mean, you know, I'm not all about some aspects you know, of it, but... I love the Navy. I love the traditions. I love the whole going out to sea. I love, love that part. I loved what I did in the Navy. I was a signalman. Um, all that was great. But I think if I had done two years, it would have been perfect. I would have done it. I would have gotten it out of my, you know, yeah. my blood. I'd be like, cool, I did it. And, you know, I would have gained all the benefits, but I would have had time to get on with my life, get to college. Because um, afterwards, you know, I didn't, I basically, I ended up in Colorado because my aunt lives here, my mom's sister. And, my cousin helped me out and she was getting, and got me a job at the school, got me a job at a newspaper so I could start writing. And then the school clinched it by wavering my, waiving my uh, residency. So I didn't have to stay a whole year. So I was able to move directly back from Italy to Colorado. And so I just kind of struggled trying to get through school. And, mm -hmm. you know, the whole time I already knew in high school, I, what I wanted to do was write. And so I was doing that and learning. Eventually I just got to a point where it was just, very overwhelming and too much going on and it wasn't getting me where I wanted to go. So I ended up dropping out of college and, uh, and I ended up working at this bar called the Falling Rock, which is a very, very famous craft beer bar. One of the most important craft beer bars in the world, really. Uh, and my wife, I met my wife before that, but we both started working at this place together. Uh, actually she started, I came back to Italy cause I was, I was done. I just wanted to get home and just really focus on writing uh, and I'm staying in Italy, like we traveled to Europe together and CJ went back home and then I decided, you know, there's, I can't stay here. I'm not going to find work. So I ended up going back to Colorado. CJ and I got married a year later and, uh, and I just kept writing, you know, I just kept working at a kid starting. I had this writer's group it was flash fiction is what I do, which is stories less than a thousand words. And I, I pioneered this whole 
style of writing. The people in my writers group are now all over the place, well known, well known in the flash fiction scene. Nancy Stolman, Sally Reno, Kona Morris, all these names that are don't mean anything to most people, but if you're in flash fiction, you would be like, oh, I know those people. That's cool. That's really cool. So yeah, I did pretty good. I was doing, you know, I wrote for Ringling Brothers when I was with Eric Dinges, hooked me up. It was fantastic hanging out with him and doing some work with him. I wrote all the bios for the that that sequel of Circus that was going on that year, those next couple of years. And then uh, I ended up winning. I was nominated for a Colorado Literary Fiction Award. Last year I was nominated for Push Prize, Push Cart Prize, which is the highest independent award given. So it was doing it. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, but then eventually what ended up happening is I wrote this book with a friend of mine who's an artist and a big, big beer nerd. It was called Italy Beer Tours or Italy Beer Country. Show it. Let's see it. I got my copy. You got your copy. Yeah, the illustrations are my my uh, friend. He's amazing. I mean, he does all these he does all these art, all the artwork for a bunch of people, beer places, stuff like that. The guy's a genius. Anyway, so we wrote, we did the research together and uh, wrote the book. Came out in 2014, and books don't make any money, but they open a lot of doors. So we started doing these tours. Nice man. No, that's 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 awesome. So first of all, you're you're a published author. Um, so congratulations. Um, Thank you very and, much. And, and I'm I'm proud to know you and obviously be connected and have your book to kind of share. <laughs> Thank you. That's very. I'm I'm very honored. <laughs> well, yeah. Listen, I mean, for me, it started. That was all just kind of friendship, Vicenza network stuff, in a sense. Uh, it, you know, it's not like your book costs a thousand dollars, even though it should. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> no, but to be fair, I know there's a, there's going to be a bunch of people looking for it, so we'll have to add the link so that um, yeah, you get a kickback, and then you get the no. <laughs> Definitely, that thousand dollars might come to you. <laughs> yeah, please read the book. I would love it if you guys read the book. You know, it's yeah. the first and only book about the Italian craft beer movement talks about the history and how it started in 1996 and how Italy, the culture, you guys would appreciate a lot, lot more because you understand the culture and how beer wasn't really in the Italian spectrum. And we, we happened to grow up in Italy in the 80s. That period in Italy was a fantastic time. Not only because, you know, Italy's still kind of cheap and all the stuff that we loved about it, but it was also where we were able to get so many beers up north in Vicenza. You know, we were able to get German beers and English beers, Belgian beers, and you know, with the, with the soldiers going to Germany and Belgium, coming back with tons of beer, all this. I mean, we really had a beer school. <laughs> that we probably didn't realize it, but. Connoisseur skill set starts early in Italy. So. <laughs> but, but you know what, for me, it was like, all I remember was, okay, Nastro Azzurro, which is what, like a Budweiser, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, it was Adelscott was like a beer with a shot of whiskey. Right. I mean, that's wrong. Not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the Italians don't got it. They don't have a beer. No. I'll, and I would try these weird like French or, or Belgian beers that were just, yeah. it was oh. more the purpose of alcohol. So Dol de Mont and then uh, Lucifer. Oh, yeah. But not that they tasted amazing. They were just, uh, to me, the starting uh, gateway to like, well, you do this for alcohol content. Right, right. But, but I, I just, again, I'm going to, we'll share some pictures here too soon, but I want to point out that it didn't all come to me or connect with me until um, a couple of years ago, came to visit, came to Italy with my wife, our, our first trip and uh, more to come, uh, obviously after what's going on in the world these days. But, um, yeah. but, but, you know, meeting you at a microbrewery and, um, and, and just, you know, the variety and the choices and the connections and, and you and your, your, your friends, uh, the, the, owners wanting to impress and share and and just those first tastes of, of, of beer were just like are you kidding me i i've not i did not correlate italian microbrewery beer flavors quality with italian food and i'm like an italian palate yeah they're they're there and oh I'm yeah not, you know and, look and you I, know i know a lot of beer writers and a lot of you know, beer people, like real serious beer people who don't know anything or didn't know about it at all. 
uh, you know, are like really Italian craft beer. Uh, you know, th the two things that are similar about the United States and Italy were that neither of them had a beer culture. So it was wide open and they could do whatever they want. Italy had behind it, of course, a great palate and a love for food and then regionalism, that hyper regionalism, which all kind of made it slightly a little unique compared to the United States, although they followed it very closely. But, you know, now you can find any any style of beer in the United States, you'll find it in Italy and different types that you wouldn't find here. Am I going to be able to find or are we going to be able to find these Italian microbreweries uh, s selections in, in the States? Is that a rare or is this like a legal battle of bullshit? No, actually, especially if you're in the East Coast, it's a lot easier. Um, Shelton Brothers and Be United are the importers and they're both uh, located in North uh, New England, basically. So um, I didn't have a problem. Okay. Especially in Boston. You're in Boston, you can find almost anything there. If you go to a bottle shop, a great beer shop, and you just ask them for time, they'll order it for you more likely. Um, but but it, it's never, not too hard to find. In Philadelphia, there's a whole place called, if it's still open, who knows how things are today. But yeah, yeah. Um, in Philadelphia, there's a place called um, La Spina. La Spina, La Spina. And it's all Italian craft beers. So yeah. 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 There, there's a, there's definitely locations but you kind of have to find them and you know they're a little pricey that's their biggest problem because their taxes are so high but hopefully they're not doing that what heineken did which was the the, the preservative was a, a, a variant of uh, formaldehyde which made them yeah no taste so, funky which i went at, on that same trip a couple of years ago one our, our last leg on our way home was in uh, amsterdam and we had real heineken i was like I knew this tasted a lot better. I Way better. It's fresher, you know. I, I don't know why I'm a beer connoisseur. I honestly am not. I mean, I, nowhere compared to your knowledge and awareness. Yeah. And, uh, okay. and so, but I mean, but you can I, taste something that's bad, you know. You, and once you try something good, you're like, it's not the same. <laughs> but, right. you know, uh, Italy, the thing that makes Italy slightly distinctive also is that Italy, while well, the United States is having a craft beer movement or has been having a craft beer movement. Italy's having an artisanal beer movement. Uh, none of the beers can be filtered or pasteurized and they have to be a small brewery, they have to be very small. So that prevents them from adding any additives and things like that. So no, you'll never get that in an Italian craft beer essentially. Okay, and that's that's probably the difference right there. Just the, it's, you know, it's like, it's finding an Italian, uh, well, okay, you make your own pasta sauce at, at home. It's just more right. the way to do it but in reality it's the ingredients like the tomatoes have to be from Italy like the more the ingredients are from the the, the point of origin the more you get the authenticity uh, because some of the quality is not quality in, right in a lot of places. and it's true and of course with beer the closer you are to the brewery the better it is I mean it's like bread if yeah you, yeah the longer you hold it there are certain beers that hold longer like wines do that a more robust beer, a darker, heavier stout, or especially sours. Sours, actually, they want you to age them a few years. Uh, those you could hold on to. In fact, you find a lot of those in the United States because they're so much easier to, to preserve and not worry about. Whereas, like, if you find a Pilsner in the United States from Italy, you know, it might take a chance. It won't be as good as Italy, you know. So, so segue. Um, so, for all of us struggling and drooling and being thirsty for beer right now, listening here, um, if we go to Rome and then there's a tour, is that right? There's a place we can go. Yes. Yeah. So we do these Italian craft beer tours. You can find on italybeertours.com. Let me, let me go there. Let me go there for fun. I'll, uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. No, you, you stay there. Come on. I know. I know you're getting old. You can stand up, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. yeah. And yeah, and I do these time craft beer tours. We do one that's uh, in Northern Italy. It's uh, five, it's a, a six days, six nights, 15 breweries, a more intense, obviously. And then we do in Rome, we just do a three hour walking tour. And then we have a full day tour. We do different, like five different locations and ice cream and dinner and definitely some food along the way, um, a beer shop. So you can buy some beer for later. Uh, but yeah, there's, we do, def do a lot of different stuff. But if anybody, anybody from Vicenza wants to come see me and do a tour, we can work something out. <laughs> Perfect. Just hanging out with my boys. My homies from the, from the Vicenza. Who's that guy? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so a couple years ago. Um, 
So you got Tracy Brown, my wife, Andrea. Uh, so much fun. We had you and then uh, obviously us. And I'm wearing my Snapchat spectacles, which of course are very goofy looking. But for those who don't realize that there's video cameras and stuff on the top, which took some good quality uh, video. I, I don't know if we'd already had a few brewskis at this point, but uh, you I'm know. I'm sure we did. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and some some good uh, antipasti here for folks who are uh, in need of that kind of nostalgia. Get your cup of coffee and your, you know, everything <laughs> else great, great. on there. Um, beers, yes. I think this was the time where you walked into one of the beer joints. Uh, and where are we at? Like, Devere? We're over there somewhere. Do you remember? Uh, that one's Baladen. The other one, I'm not sure. There's one, Vere, which is right by the Vatican. And then there's one that was Maque, which was where we had to stand outside in the alley because it was just the, the place is so tiny. <laughs> so, yeah, this, that place is pretty famous. Yeah, th so this place is awesome. Um, I know I'm blending it with, uh, hey, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pasta. Ah, que buena la pasta. Si, la pasta italiana, buenísima. Um, and you can see the beers in all the styles, stouts, porters, IPAs, American pale ales. All the variety. Pumpkin ale. That probably had that because it's one of my faves. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know. You know, know. That, where that brewery is, yeah, maybe. Where that brewery is, they have over 400 types of pumpkins, of zucchini and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's in the Gra Valley in, in Torino. In that area. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm doing some duplication. So this is probably a tiramisu with some other kind of vino. Oh, and, and, and I know I, I went to, uh, we, went, we went all over the place, but um, I'm just trying to, you know, find some of those memories to share. You're looking for the bill? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bill, yeah, the bill wasn't bad. I don't remember. And you owe me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Right. For three years, I've been going, all three summers, I've been in Italy. This is my fourth one. This is a big year, of course. And, but I know, I know. Schifo, huh? What can you do? Uh, just just wait for it to all come back around. I, I don't know why this isn't uh, pulling, but all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop out of this because, uh, you know. You're taking a tour. Yeah, it was, uh, it was going in a different direction. So, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm glad you're you're a part of that, and you're you're really actually onto something. I just it, it's such a, a a niche that, you know, uh, in in good form, you're not getting a million people knocking down your door. But on on a different front, this is an audience that I think for those that need an extra piece of motivation, you know, like their two for one coupons, uh, <laughs> going to Rome and and not just to see the sites, but to do a microbrewery tour. I just think there's value there. Uh, and, and, you know, like a lot of the people that it's crazy because, you know, obviously our demographics were men, 65, you know, 35, college educated, you know, or, or older whose kids are out. But you're thinking that, you know, the women, uh, pretty much everybody that signed up for a room tour came from women who are signing up for their husbands, brothers, you know, <laughs> boyfriends who were done doing doing the tours, done seeing all the sites, and they needed a break. And it was like, yeah, there, you know, it worked out perfectly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's perfect. I, 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 I could see it. I, and, um, you know, yeah, this, this year I was supposed to start a two and a half hour beer tour. We go up the Tiber River in a boat uh, yeah. and you get all the way up past the Vatican a little bit and then come back around uh, from Trastevere up. It's, you know, two and a half hours, like beer, food, just see Rome from a different perspective while doing something from a different perspective. In, in a good perspective, in a way that people want to enjoy their, their memory that it, and it adds to it. And it's nice because, you know, it's like, it's not, it's not a pub crawl. It's not about going out and getting hammered. It's about having a few beers and enjoying them. You know, you get a little buzz. <laughs> and when the tour is over, 
not my fault what happens here. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, so that was a great time. And I, again, thank you for, for being there for us, flexibly hosting and so forth. Um, oh, thank you, man. I had such a blast. That was good. And I look forward to doing that. I was, I was saying, um, I think I was saying it to Jamie Anson. It's, so we, our trip, we ended up going to Vicenza. And um, it was one of these things where it's like, you just can't do everything in 10 days, which is very common American thinking. I'm going to do Italy in 10 days. It's so small. <laughs> yeah, you just you can do it all. It's no problem. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I, I only skimmed the surface on Vicenza, but in truth, it, it, it's, for me, it, Italy is about the people and it's about immersing in, in the Italian culture and, uh, you know, um, doing some translating for my wife. Uh, she's Italian by uh, genetics, but she's, uh, you know, doesn't speak it fluently and you know that's that's part of the game, right? But uh, but the more she goes, and then the next trip here, I I, I can't wait yeah. to see my son and, and let him you know take it in. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it, to me, Rome was much more fun, and I'm more happy to consider being back in that neck of the woods than going to Vicenza. Now it's it's not a shot at Vicenza; it's just the post has changed. Um, not yeah. everybody's there. I'm happy to see the people that are there. Uh, it's just, it's difficult to kind of make the effort to kind of collectively pull everybody and what's that for? For me, I'm, I'm nobody. So I don't really need that, uh, that kind of thing. But, you know, um, it, but it was nice also because you know what? It was more enjoyable. You gotta remember the American tourist side. My, you gotta get, let the wife see things. So we did Verona. We, we, uh, we went to see Aida in, in the um, arena. Arena. See, yeah. that ain't, uh, it, it just, you know, some of the, you know, Romeo, Juliet, that's the, the storylining there in Verona. Um, yeah, I mean. You know, all the years that I've been going back to Italy, I still haven't been able to make it back to Vicenza, you know. Uh, and, and I haven't seen it since, like, the 90s, really, you know. I, I, I can't go 94, maybe 95, the latest I saw it. No, it, wait a minute, 96, 97. That was a wow. long time. That's a long time ago, but. I know. You go back a lot more than I mean. Obviously, you you're part of the the business that you've got going on in uh, Roma and such, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got family, right? Yeah. You're, yeah, yeah. So so you go there, and then you, your sister typically comes to visit from. Yeah. She's in UK. London. Comes out, hangs out. And, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, you know, one of the hardest things for me was I never wanted to leave Italy, and having to join the navy and do all that shit was just. Just not what I, I couldn't wait to get back to Italy when we left, and then we, you know, had to join the military. So, and then I had to come back here to go to school. It was like for me, it was just a, it was a hard time. I did not want to be in the United States. Colorado has been fantastic to me, and I love the state. It's a great place to live. The people are amazing, but, you know. But I finally found this nice balance where I can go home in the summer and be with my family and really doing something there, not just sitting around and. You know, and I'm busy and it's great. And I'm doing something I love and I care about. But, you know, I get to see my friends. I get to see you and Jimmy Zacchino is there because he was stationed there. That was so much fun. Uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, Marissa Richie came out with her kids and her husband, Brian Dubuque. And, you know, I get to meet your families. And I love that. I met your yeah. wife. I mean, I'm like, for yeah. me, it's like I never left Vicenza. It's always something that I've always been proud yeah. of. Always, always have. To, you know, when I, when, when my wife was like your high school friends, <laughs> I don't want to see my high school friends. Right, right. <laughs> my wife's the same way. We, we got like a graduating class of fifty. They they got like eight hundred, <laughs> yeah. so they're like you're one of those guys. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, good stuff. So let let's talk about when we were kids. Uh, let's let's hop back to Vicenza. Um, you know, now we're we're living in Vicenza, and um, you know. Uh, what what year? Remind me again. I don't. I don't. I was there from eighty six to ninety. My parents, my family stayed fifteen years, like you know, fifteen more years, I think. So they're almost there for twenty years before I was, but I had to leave, so I wasn't there. Okay. They decided to move around, but yeah. So I was there from eighty six to ninety. Went back and forth after ninety to like ninety seven. Remind remind me or remind us what what was eighty six like for you? What were you like, an eighth grader or something? No, I started my freshman year. So I showed up on my in my freshman year. It was perfect. It was perfect. Where, wait, wait, where did you come from? Were you in Germany or what? Right, so uh, 
so we had left Siganella, went to Indianapolis. Where my dad was an instructor for Benjamin Harrison. My dad was a journalist in the Navy and broadcaster. That's why he was with AFN. And uh, <clears throat> so we left. We went to Indiana, and then we went to Annapolis, Maryland. My dad was stationed in the, at the Pentagon. But I was only there for a couple of years because my the guy who was the command master chief in Vicenza uh, had an emergency, had to leave early. So we ended up leaving Annapolis early and headed back to Vicenza. Oh, we were so happy. We couldn't wait to get back. I mean, we'd been in the state for like six years, seven years, something like, you know, something like that. Wait, we just couldn't wait to get back. It's not the same in Indianapolis? It's not the same as <laughs> <laughs> no, Coming from a village in Sicily. <laughs> right, right. What the fuck? Crack epidemic, racism. That was, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 to your point, I miss what we had. I mean, for many wow. reasons, but but well, yeah, uh, we got back to Vicenza, it was like, I mean, we got there early, we got there in June, and we stayed in Gaeta with my cousins on the beach there, stayed in Rome with my grandmother and my family, so it was getting back, and my cousins were in town with us, and my parents went to Vicenza to look for an apartment, which was really hard to find at the time, and we were still at the Hotel Continental in downtown Vicenza yeah. for a long time. I was there, too, when we when I was, like, six months old, by yeah, myself. No. Six no. months old, wow, you were there for a long time, I know that. Yeah. But I was so happy, I mean, I just found my place, you know what I mean, like, by then I'd Americanized enough, but I was still at home, you know. Vicenza wasn't Rome, but you know, it was Italy. And I was like, die, Terron. I'm like, what the fuck's a Terron? <laughs> so funny. And I don't want a cappuccio. I want a cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> the first night that my mom and I, when we went back, the first day we were in Vicenza, we were like, let's go walk around. It's a beautiful little town, so we get lost. So we asked the gas attendant at a gas station, excuse me, you know, excuse me, uh, we're trying to get back to the Continental Hotel. He's like, ma -na 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 -na. <laughs> and I look at my mom and I said, what did he say? She goes, I don't know what he said. <laughs> 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 but, oh, it was, you know, but it was, but I was just, we were happy there, you know, and, and it was, it was a great time. We were, for me, you know, then wrestling, football, and, and the friends I had. I mean, I was home. That's where I wanted to be, and I never wanted to leave. And that didn't turn out that way, but, you know, whatever. Shit. Yeah. So, so, so you started with football. Who, which team did you play? I wrestled. For? My freshman year, I wrestled. Well, that, yeah, but that's a winter sport. So we're, oh. we're, yeah. uh, start with, uh, wh which team were you? Was this back in the day when it was split? It was, so Brown it was the Dempsey? first year that we split it. Okay. Because of the the year before that, the, you guys we played the the Rhino. Remember the the Milan professional team and beat them. Which, I by the way, I have a friend who was on that team. A friend of mine in Rome owns a pub there. He was on. Small pub. Cool. So who was there? It was like, oh man, I gotta remember. Uh, Dicky was still on the team. Was still there, and uh, uh, well, you know, Glenn Gravel and. Uh, who else is in there? I'm trying to remember all these names now. Well, no, so, they all wait, wait, well, I'm sorry, but which team were you on, Drax or? Well, Dan? when we fought, I was on, I was on Dracula's team. Okay, so the black, what was it? Black, white, or gold, white, whatever. Yeah, I think we were black and gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You Thanks. guys are white and gold, right? So we're black. Yeah. So, what do you have? Did you have David Richmond? David Richmond, yeah. David Richmond was on my team that last year we were there. So my first year, Craig Beck loves to talk about my first year there. Craig was hey, our quarterback. Brian, I, I apologize, but I, 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 a guest coming in. We've got a guest coming through. Why? Who <laughs> Ciao, Mona. Well, that sounds like a Goldstein to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I can't see you, fool. <laughs> you can't see me. I'm walking. I'm walking by a Chiesa. Can you see me? Whoa. Let me go turn my How are you? I'm doing well. Let me get uh all right. Hello. Hello. You handsome son of a bitch. Look at that. What's up? I just want a disclaimer. Brian, I don't talk to you, but I do think about you. My friend, I think about you all the time. I understand life's a busy motherfucker. <laughs> What do you think people are bearing grudges in this? What do you, what do you, is this the time to, or, you know, put, put out your grievances? <laughs> your grievances? Is this a good enough connection here or no? There you are. Yeah, yeah, there you are. All right. All right. Perfect. 
you know, a note after I get out of high school, after I finished Navy and everything, Skippy, Brazil, we're all headed to Virgin Islands. They're like, <laughs> you coming? I was like, dude, I have to school. <laughs> I, I thought about, in the first year, I was like, man, I need to go to the Virgin Islands. And then that fucking hurricane, that ended all of it. <laughs> and that ended it. It blew us all out. But that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I, just telling I was just telling Buzz that, you know? I mean, I was, uh, I'm, me, you, and Sean Stanton, we thought we had problems back then, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, right. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. My problems were over. I was done with the Navy. I'm like, fuck this. I can do anything. <laughs> Skippy, Skippy, Skippy had the worst career direction ever. I mean, it just seemed like... I don't know. Was he a bartender for 23 years? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think life is good, but I think he took La Dolce Vita and threw some reggae on that shit. He was like, hey, man. That's it. Why not? Well, you know, and then I, I have to think about you because here they legalize weed, and I was like, Man, Skippy left way too early. <laughs> you needed we were we were the grounds on the troops before all that, you see. So we so were doing did, all the all the work behind the scenes. <laughs> so we got to add the add the point that you're talking about Colorado and we and, are talking and, about Colorado. Skippy yes. used to live out there. I lived out there. That's right. Yeah. I forgot you lived there too. I was out for a short stint, but yeah. Um, ah, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember I came here a year. You were still in school, and I came to see you, and it was awesome. I had a great time. Great campus. Great, great Yeah, class. it was a great campus. Yeah, Skippy had Great microbrews, too. Yeah? Yeah, we started. didn't even know. <laughs> no, I had no idea yet. So you're still in Colorado, Jansen? I'm still here, man. Denver? Beautiful. Yeah, married a Colorado girl. She's awesome. Worked at this famous Colorado bar forever. And so now I'm just spending the summers in Italy and come out here in the winter. It's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. <laughs> you miss, you, you'll have to come and check out the podcast to see. I will. The, I will. Uh, the yeah. uh, previous conversation. We were just getting into freshman year. So, so we covered the current state, which is the you know besides. I don't mean COVID. I mean the the whole world of microbrews. What he does in Rome. He's a published author. Now we're into the realm of what was it like being a freshman at Vicenza. And uh, we're, we're in football season to start. Now, granted, I say it, it sounds like this is going to be a five-hour interview, but of course, we're going to cut somewhere. <laughs> I, honestly, I just came from D.C., so there was nothing in Vicenza that was going to intimidate me or make me uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm, I found my home. I met the first person I met was Karen Abbott. <laughs> I met Matt McGorder like right after. Like we get in the building and Matt McGorder was sitting there drinking his soda at the table at the fucking cafeteria. <laughs> and and then it went on. He lived right up the street from me. So it's like, you know, met that the was a bonus. Brothers. Then it was bridge parties and on and on. <laughs> good good censorship. Keep it on the level. Keep it up there. <laughs> This is going to be very hard on this conversation. <laughs> I'm mixing the wrong people into the wrong. Uh... Well, I just, you know. <laughs> we lost your video. Oh, there you are. It's all right. I'm on low power. I'm using my last few few uh, few bars uh, with you guys. So we'll, we should keep it concentrated on on the. Uh, I guess my big question to you, Skips, how are you doing, man? <sighs> we're, we're doing. You're we're doing, doing the best we can. <laughs> Yes, he, he, he runs a million marathons. He's got zero fat on his body. I heard so, of that. That's fantastic, man. <laughs> it's hot. it's Sai Hakim. Sai <laughs> Sai really got you right. You you were like remembering. Yes, this is where it starts. I remember <laughs> like the first time I I ran a marathon. My my dad's all like, "You you got to call Sai Hakim." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but do I really have to like? He's... <laughs> but you know what? I ended up calling Sai Hakim. <laughs> well, that's not a bad person to follow. No. <laughs> that's great. Oh, man. Skippy. Yeah, man, I miss you, brother. It's been a long time. Me too, time, me, too me too. So, you guys, too, have was... A... When's, the, when's the last time you guys connected? I'm missing that part. Were we in the I 90s? think the last time I saw you was uh, when we went to Brazil's place. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that was like 1990, right? Yeah, I think that was the last time I saw you. Dude. I've talked to you from time to time, but I haven't, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so good on the Facebook. But, yes, yeah, so definitely I think that's the last time. Like, Buzz Nahas' uh, little basement. Can me, I tell you, me, you, and Damon. Me, you, and David. Can I tell him the story, Skippy, when we went couch hipping? <laughs> <laughs> of course. It has nothing to do with Vicenza High, except just Vicenza High was there. <laughs> it was... <laughs> it was so much fun because we just got, well, I was still in the Navy, right? I just got in a base. I think you're just, I don't even know. I was I going to my ship done. still. So I came to see <laughs> you guys and hung out with you guys for a bit. Wow, it was so much fun. Yeah, we're out in the middle of nowhere. This big ass field. We're going to go cow dipping. <laughs> it's like beautiful rolling hills in Jersey. <laughs> we're like, we got to find the biggest one. It is like a light. It's like, it was like, can we just, it's like four o'clock in the morning, by the way, right? <laughs> so we go, we're like, we're inspiration so, hits. Take off running. And Skippy goes, but I just hear him tumble, but he gets up, he's still fucking hauling ass. <laughs> we get to the fence where he's like, I think I slipped a cow shit. <laughs> I, had, I had so much cow shit on me. I was hanging out of the car. <laughs> I can't even get like, it you off. can't get in my car. <laughs> God, we had so much fun. That was like one weekend of just, I'll never forget this weekend. <laughs> we were trying to do a shot a minute. <laughs> we were so hammered. That was a good time. See, see Sean said we, were, we, we kind of skipped over freshman high school. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did post VHS. <laughs> that's fine the memories are more enjoyable than the you know reconnecting 30 years for you guys shame on yeah that. you know i had the pleasure of meeting your wife when you guys are married i remember that oh that's where i saw you we had the 10th reunion which one the, the one in vegas vegas that was the last time i saw you that was fun too <laughs> i remember that one i think that was the last one i went to you didn't get, oh, you were not the Vegas one, home. Huh? I was. You, you were, okay. Yeah, we were staying at Craig's. Craig. Yeah, 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 that's right. He was in classic Craig Beck. He's listening to Simple I'm, I'm, Man, you know? Like, high school buddies. I'm on a, a Zoom call, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you can't hear that song in high school. It's just classic, classic. <laughs> uh, too funny. I know. I know, Sean, you got a son. Skip, you got one kid? I got two. I got I got an eleven year old and eight year old, so I'm oh, in it. Oh, nice! He got his hands full. He's uh, yeah. COVID's making him, uh, you yeah. know, follow through, fulfill, fulfill. There's no job yeah. in the middle. It's like all day. I think everybody's got that, right? Or, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! What a so, fun. so yeah. So uh, so. Let me think here. Uh, let's go back to let's go back to Vicenza. Let's get some memories, some funnies that, that you guys remember. When did you guys meet in uh, Vicenza? I was there, right? When did you get there, Brian? I got there at '86. So we yeah, both so... Our freshman year, and your brother is just leaving. Yeah, and you lived up the street. Yeah. So it was yeah, a natural was... fit. Yeah, we hung out a lot. I mean, Skippy and I were just always like it was always one of those things where we were just being in the same place at the same time. And we just hang out. <laughs> it was like nice, nice. We got a uh, with the bridge parties were right up the street from our house. We did those all the time. And when I came back, ah, uh, when you had the Alfa Romeo, and we'd hang yeah, out. Yeah, that, that's came back. <laughs> that was fun. Then the, the Alfa Romeo, the classic feature car that like uh, I don't know passed on. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. That that thing's still probably driving around. I don't that's know. That's still they, probably there. That was a tank was driving by itself. <laughs> uh, what about sports trips when did we were we all on on uh and any of those trips i was i didn't have sports except for football and wrestling so i didn't have sports with you guys okay. i wish so i would have played tennis i know skippy played tennis i would have done that yeah so it was what was tennis and soccer and then it was cross country and volleyball and stuff right yeah yeah, yeah. and then and football was on its own right mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Football is on. It's too big. It's too shit. Take All right. Care. Well, let's let's go somewhere else. Let's go to uh, classrooms. Funny, funny stories and, and memories from uh, sitting in a classroom with teachers. Getting in trouble. Come on now. There's a. <laughs> oh, like, I remember Mr. 
I remember Mr. Georgie. <laughs> Mr. Georgie. <laughs> Mr. Georgie, he was cool because I was joining the Navy. He'd been in the Navy. He would always tell me shit, shit about the Navy. And he was in World War II. He's telling me some great shit. Of course, Mr. Hakeem, you know, he's always a big influence. What classes do we have together, Steve? I don't think we have many you classes. You know, I, I, you're asking me things I just don't have any memory of. I know. I mean, I remember the school, but to tell me who was in certain classes, I'd just be, uh, this and just that. be making it up. It is a little bad. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> I, I remember Mr. Solomon doing this. Yeah. And the coffee <laughs> boiling for an hour before the class yeah. is over. And Mr. Richie speaking backwards was always a highlight. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was fun. That was always and just fun. The, and the interchangeable uh, of, of the elementary school teachers and the high school teachers. It's, it's not like we never saw the elementary school teachers that we had. Right? They were always kind of right there, too. So, yeah. <laughs> it's totally. But uh, in the North 40, and I totally remember being across the street smoking cigarettes the whole time. And Draculich couldn't smell, so you, <laughs> so he didn't know you were smoking, you know, which I is a blessing. <laughs> was was that when you weren't allowed to smoke, or you, you, you were allowed, If you're in sports, you weren't allowed to smoke. You don't remember that? You had to sign that contract that you wouldn't smoke or drink. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't smoke. So I wasn't. Right. Was this is a real contract. No wonder I didn't understand what a contract was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, too funny. So. What's Bazil up to? Is he? He's. Uh... I spoke to Bazil this morning. He's paranoid to travel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's okay if I go up to Maine on Thursday and stay in a hotel? <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be our fun. But what about? <laughs> <laughs> Did he open that bagel shop well. yet? What's up? He opened that bagel shop up yet? No, no. I should tell him because he, you know, he, he's unemployed like the. Like some of us here, so <laughs> so we're yeah. searching for ideas. Well, that was his chance, man. That's all he talked about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I was like I told Sean earlier. I was always very fortunate to always have a Vicenza people my entire life. You know, whether it was right afterwards in the Virgin Islands or in New right. York, I've always been. And then it helps to have a couple brothers that go there too. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you know, that was my thing is I was so far apart from people from Vicenza. Like, I did the four years, and then I was gone. Nobody joined the Navy. Nobody was where I was. You know, it wasn't like I ran into people the exchange or anything somewhere else in, like, Georgia or something. Uh, the only time I ran into people was, like, when I went up to see somebody. Um, <laughs> and I did. I would see people here and there. I saw Skippy, Skip, or not Skippy, but uh, Ma Matteo Ciccione visited me when I was in La Madalena, Italy, and I had these – Two gorgeous nice. roommates. <laughs> they're sunbathing naked outside. <laughs> and they come in the room. That's like, they're naked. They do that all the time. <laughs> Are you talking about Matt McGorder? Yeah. Matt McGorder. Yeah. Matt McGorder was the best man at my wedding. Oh, shit. Yeah. What, you, how often do you guys stay in touch? I stay in touch with Matt quite on a regular basis, pretty much. He's been good about calling. I can get bad about that shit terrible about it you know facebook's helped a little bit but then i don't even get on my facebook half the time and i have to do it for work so then i'm like ah. <laughs> but i'm always happy to see friends you know always happy to see people from vicenza it's like you know it's that brotherhood that sisterhood thing you know that connection that we have that brian you know who i talk to like every two weeks who Ooh. i've never stopped talking to is massimo do you really do <laughs> like me and massimo you know, like every two weeks, what's up, blah, blah, blah. So it's always hilarious because you always inevitably come up and Thomas <laughs> Borsos and all those days. So I just think it's it's funny how this whole Vicenza thing works. It is, man. We, we were tight. I think that's when you and me and Skippy and I hung out a lot more after Craig left. So like my junior and senior year, we were hanging a lot because we were hanging out with people who were outside of high school. Like I was hanging out with Massimo and Mike Eubanks and Rosanna. Uh, yeah, we were all right. In in Kohut and those guys, or so that, in any in any of like the class of '89 or '88 who just didn't leave, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's true. And it was that kind whole, of fun. The whole University of Maryland crowd, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Zakino. I remember seeing Zakino afterwards. You would see him a bit. Yeah. That's right, so let's go back to Vicenza. Some commonalities for our audience that's entertained uh, by, by your antics. But so, <laughs> I know we should have had this private one first, Sean. You can't just text me on the fly. You know, so I, got, I got dancing on the phone. <laughs> that's like, never good. <laughs> we, like, you never know. This might be the perfect thing that everybody wants to see. Who knows? <laughs> So, oh, so you remember Mr. Solomon's uh, ticks? Uh, with the, with the... Yeah, I think I think he had mustard or some some kind of condiment and like a toothpaste thing too, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I, yeah, I don't necessarily. I just remember nice things. I, I remember Mrs. Ritchie being really cool, and that was a safe place to hang out and shoot the yep. shit with her, as yep. well as Zaboric. Yeah, um, I remember. I mean, I, Mr. Solomon for me was great because he was such a, he's a great English teacher. He was about, you know, we had to read a lot. We had to dissect sentences like it was fucking no tomorrow. But that was the shit I loved. I mean, I, that, those fundamentals oh, were shit. what I use today. You know? said shit. <laughs> What's it We've got a censor. We're being censored. Uh, who else did I see? You know, there was, that, it was just for me, the entire school, every teacher, Mr. Club, Mr. Club was amazing. You know, he was a, it was a great teacher. They were all excellent teachers. Yeah. Every one of them. Your dad, I remember your dad was always, hey, how are you? You know, how are you doing? And those those things that were like so just human, you know, that you just didn't get in other places in the world. And, you know, we would go on field trips. And if you were a senior or junior, they didn't care if you drank beer. You know, they treated you like an adult when you were a senior. You're expected to act like an adult. And we had that that sense of, you know, having to to be adults, and uh, you know, we we acted like fools, that's for sure. But yeah. we all had good times. You know, when nobody yeah. got in trouble. Nobody was into anything serious, and you know, there weren't many drugs. I mean, I remember there was some drug scenes and this and that. But what I just come from was nothing like that. You know, I, and I wasn't involved. I didn't care. I never did drugs anyway until I got out of the navy and I started smoking weed. You know, like but it's everywhere, and uh, you know. There's different reasons and such. What's but that? I'm saying it's it's everywhere. So you know, there's no but it exclusions. Was so minimal that you know, it was safe. We could go anywhere in Italy. We went That's, together. That, tell me about concerts. Like uh, I've been, it's a good theme. I've been running with people. What what concerts do you remember uh, the most? You know, I didn't go to many concerts, but I did go to. Uh, it was Lita Ford was opening up for Bon Jovi. Kiss me dead. Along. I went to that concert. And in the middle of the show, Lita Ford singing, and she's like, fuck you, fuck you. And so I turned, I don't remember, I think maybe Skip was there. I turned to somebody and I was like, I bet that's gonna be Mike Eubanks. And we're laughing. So we get we finally find Mike. He's like, Did you see Lita Ford flip me off? I was like, show your tits. Oh jeez. <laughs> and she was furious. But I remember that show. I didn't go to many shows. My sister went to a ton of shows. She has this awesome photo album, like two photo albums, full of like pictures with Randy Rhodes, Ozzy Osbourne, Anthrax, you know, her and Heather. Um, Rhett Hudson, yeah, Jarrett. Yeah, they used to go all the time to these shows. And so I, I didn't go to too many concerts. My thing was just going downtown. I'd like to drink and meet people and hang out. That was like, that was always like my thing, you know. I, I didn't. I love going to trial. Like I love their field trips. That shit was so interesting. You know, we learned so much about it. And I loved school. I mean, I really, really liked school, and I loved that we had an opportunity to get a really good education. I mean, I took. I was an art history minor in college, and it was like it was a joke. You know, we studied. We studied la, the la re, or not la arena, the uh, teatro olimpico, and I was like, I graduated in that building. You know, it's like. You, it doesn't connect like they, they didn't even have any idea what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I had a similar experience when uh, the trip I took a couple of years ago, uh, bringing my wife in, into the arena, like just the, the walking before you get to the actual inside of the amphitheater. And, and all the statues. Just, yeah, she's just like, like, are you kidding me? Like, really? This is this is where you get to graduate. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. like you know totally like i don't want to talk to you kind of thing it was 
to be fair, it, and it's a gem. It really was a gem for us. It, it, it was, you know, and, and it's nice when movies pick it up or bring it around and you kind of see it on a show you're not expecting. And you're like, that's the Teatro Olimpico. I remember this. Um, and, you know, you share it out with people. Um, or I share it out on Facebook if it's true or not. But anyway, um, yeah. Oh, and I like that we were like, you know, yeah, we were, we're kids and we're acting stupid. And, but we knew and we appreciated it, you know. Yeah. I mean, no, many, many of you guys had never left Italy in general or Germany or Europe, you know. I remember the day sorry, sorry to cut you off. I was just going to say, Skippy's gone. He, yeah. he said his phone was dying. So no big deal. We, we, we got Perfect. a good piece of him. Uh, that's Skippy for you. You right. see him for a minute, then he's gone. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Ah, uh, Skippy, I love that guy. Yeah. yeah, Skippy was probably one of my closest friends, dude. It's like, I think, I mean, I knew Matt McWhorter for a long time. We were always good friends. I think I was real, real close to Skippy, too. You know, yeah. he was always there. We were always, you know, even after when I got out of the Navy and I was there for a little while, and, you know, just seeing Skippy was, you know, seeing him when I was in between. But, you know, I was always a little jealous of you guys because you were so fortunate to stay in touch that you guys were all friends together. You guys went places together. So you still held that. You still had that. You were tethered very tightly to the Vicenza. Yeah. Well, because we kept coming back to Vicenza? I well, mean, yeah, because one, I had to leave early. So I was only really there for four years, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. and then well, I didn't go anywhere with other Vicenza people. I was on, you know, I was pretty much on my own. And like when I got to Colorado, everybody left. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn. Yeah, I mean, who's out there right now? Sean Pleb? The, the... I know Kadena, Kevin Kadena. He's in Colorado Springs. I saw him a couple times. Yeah. Um, Mr. Club, Mrs. Club, I think they're out there too. I don't um, know if they're here of Nebraska. I know that um, okay. uh, Sean's brother is in, um, ah. is in Nebraska. But okay. Good point. Yeah, and, you know, and I'm always like, hey, and, and this is to everybody out there. If you're ever follow, if you're ever in Denver, give me a shout out. I'd love to show you around. I know a few places. <laughs> you know your way. You're the ambassador. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, um, you know, I, we've we've had a great time, and um, you know, Vicenza's it's a gem. There's a lot of good stories, and um, you know, it, it's fun to kind of go back and talk talk through these things um so what was i saying yeah i mean the memories you know they they just flash back but um it's it, it's your point it, you're you keep the friendships and i i'm grateful for that aspect of, of some of the me, facebook me, connections me it's just too. it's easy yeah, there, there were you know for me like leaving all that shit in the states that i've been going through and it was such a relief. You know, we lived in some bad areas. My school was right in the middle of the ghetto. I mean, it was, it was intense. And, and then just getting to Vicenza where you didn't have any of those worries. You know, mm -hmm. crime was the least of our worries in Vicenza. On Naples, it would have been a different story. But Vicenza, we, you know, yeah. we, we were the crime. <laughs> we were you the know? company makers. But uh, you want a Vicenza story? Yeah. I'll tell you a great Vicenza story. James Cameron. <laughs> He's like, we're going to, I think I was still, I had to have been a sophomore, maybe a junior at most, but he's like, I'll come pick you up. So he picks me up in his car. I'm like, where'd you get this car? He's like, it's my uncle's. I was like, all right. I didn't think anything of it. We go to this thing. He's driving around. It dawned on me on the way back. I was like, you don't have an uncle in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> he was like, I walked by a gas station. Some dude was, goes to pay. He takes the car. <laughs> What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> he drove the car away and then he brought he washed it and brought it back. <laughs> and put it back it, where he was. <laughs> that's crazy. That is not an admission to crime. <laughs> no. I no. Late anyway. That's a crazy story. <laughs> but it was like little yeah, no. that, so so tell me um I tried to get a couple other uh, of your BFFs on here. So in a sense I'm I'm making this your gift. Yeah. No, I know, I know, I'm not. I'm, I, I enjoy the the banter and the camaraderie, and, and it's a chance to see everybody in one one place. So I, that's I was, kind of the format I like. I had this like, it like my freshman year, you know. The, so I told you I met, you know, Karen Abbott was the first person I met, 
Kyle and Karen lived right up the street from me. They lived on the other side of the bridge. They lived in, uh, and so, and then I met Matt McWhorter right after that, pretty much immediately, you know, just in the gym. Uh, Skippy lived up the road. Eric Dinges was my neighbor. So I saw a lot of them. Uh, and then, you know, my freshman year, I didn't really know anybody. Of course, you know, you know, a lot of people is always very friendly. Like my dad was always like, you know, this is way different than all the other times we moved. This will be your first time. I'd never been on a military base in general. because We didn't go unless we had like doctor's appointments or we stayed pretty. My parents always kept us away from the kind of military scene. Um, and my, but it was the first time I was using my ID card. It was the first time I was on a base and we weren't in the army. So my dad was in the Navy. So it was a whole different world altogether. But, uh, but I remember like, you know, that freshman year, everybody was cool. But I remember one time I was at the teen club, the famous teen club. And I was hanging out. I think they had some event. And I didn't know anybody yet. And I was standing there. And Shanda Peru came up to me. And she said, you don't have any friends, do you? And I said, no. She goes, you do now. And she has always been one of the closest friends I've had in my whole life. She, I still talk to Shanda Peru. That's you know, awesome. Pretty regularly. Met her husband. Saw her in the night. She's, she's always been just, like, so close to me. Like, she, she just, you know, that was Shanda. She's, like, she was the kind of person, like, she was straight. This is the way it is. And so I always had Shanda. And then, you know, from Shanda's friends, it became like Craig and Brian Velden came by. And so me, Craig, and Brian Velden started hanging out. And then it was Shanda, uh, Michelle Mobley, Gina Valletta. And we just formed Joanna Kinsey, uh, Lisa, what was her last name? Lisa. So she actually lives here in Colorado, too. Her husband owns a sports star. I wonder how it's sports store. But uh, it was Lisa, not Lisa Brown, Lisa Abbott, maybe Lisa Abbott. I don't know. It's not Abbott. Anyway, it'll come to me in a minute. But but we all just sort of made this, had this little click. And we just formed. And it was fun because everybody had their own friends still, but we would always kind of hang out. And so I was able to really meet everybody at a more intimate level. And, and so we would have, you know, if we went to a party, it was like you always knew somebody, obviously, but it, it's just I got to know everybody a little bit more and a little bit more. I was sort of lucky because I didn't really have one set of friends. And I don't think anybody really had that chance because if you did, sooner or later, somebody left. Craig left. Brian yeah. Brown kind of left. And so my friends began to change. And then I started hanging out with, um, I don't even know how I started with Massimo Yoshida and those guys. And they were, you know, four years out. My yeah. Eubanks just came back from the army and Massimo yeah. just finished college. And so they were like 24, but you know, yeah. my parents were like, look, you know, your job is to go to school. They're like, no drugs. Fine. <laughs> I was doing all the drinking I could, but no drugs. And, uh, and, and you got to go to school as long as your grades are good, you know? And so they just, you know, they knew that I was not the kind of person I'm fiercely independent. Even as a boy, I was always in this shit and, they just kind of knew to let me, let me be wild, but I would follow their rules. I wouldn't do anything stupid. I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't rob anybody or anything like that. And so, and it was easy there. Nobody really did anything bad. So we were good. We, yeah, so it was a great place. It, it was, uh, yeah, no matter where we went, we, we, yeah. we all had our little bars, September's and uh, what was the one? Your brother, Lem, was telling me how they hooked that, hooked that all up. It was the, the pizza place. Uh, where all the high school kids hung out. It was downstairs, remember? No. Oh, oh, it'll come to me. I totally have it. I know the name of it. But Len was like, yeah, that was my class. He set that all up and met all these people and got all these places. Oh, what was the name of that place? Those were all the high school kids hung out. It was fun, dude. It was like, yeah, no, Vicenza was great. So that's fact, cool. I was on a roll that first semester. Wow. It wasn't ever happening again, but... <laughs> And the first party I went to was Shanda invited me. She was dating a guy who was in the Special Forces. Wow. And they had this big party. And they had this like a whole apartment building. And he was like, so everybody there was in Special Forces. And it was it was really interesting. It was like we were there. It was all these airborne rangers. And, uh, and I remember it was like the first night I ever went out. First time I ever went somewhere with high school friends. Got hammered. And I was climbing up on this roof. And this guy's like, get off that roof. You're going to fall. And so I slipped. And downstairs they had this bar and they had this kiddie pool full of ice with all the beers stuff in it. And I come crashing down beyond the bar. 
oh dude those are those fucking special forces dudes loved it they thought i was shit was funny so it, it's like right on and one of my friends was uh dave castillo who's you know airborne and stuff like that and uh-huh. i kind of connect with that group too so i was like i had this ring of friends that were always just solid you know yeah. no that's great that's and that's that's what i think uh keeps it together um wait, so remind me of football wrestling anything in the spring no, I didn't, because by then I was, like, exhausted. <laughs> I, like, shin splints and beat the hell. <laughs> uh, needed to repair. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I to repair. What about summer hire? Did you uh, did you get into summer I hire? I didn't, because I used to spend my summers in Gaeta. My cousin's on the beach there. So Tough I'd winter life. and fuck yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then a couple summers, the last two summers, I stayed at home, and I just hung out. And I actually, I worked with um, Rosanna Monomago. She okay. was a her and I were teaching little kids how to swim. It was a first aid course for kids. And so I was like the first kind of job I picked. And your brother came back that year when I met him. Okay. And these are all his, you know, classmates. <laughs> Kawa Hai, right. 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 But yeah, it was fun, man. Nice. Cool. And, I, yes. and I just had this opportunity to be, like I said, I never had to be anybody else but myself. I, and I don't know if everybody's experience in is is that way. Uh, maybe mine was a little more unique, but as I said, I just come from a long, long, hard, you know, a lot of fighting and having to deal with bad elements. And, you know, for me, it depends. was like, <sighs> yeah, what a stress relief. What a chance to just be a kid. Yeah. I mean, you were there for a lifetime, you know, how was it, how was it different for you than how I explained it? Oh, this isn't about me, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> good interview trick the audience <laughs> and back to you <laughs> i think i think i'm sharing as i do do these podcasts i feel like i'm i'm sharing not that i'm I'm holding out on you uh you know vicenza i i was in the rat race for you know sports so i knew what i had to do on that of front. course yeah your dad was a coach yeah, yeah that, that was like our our um our bond, you know, the, the uh, to be a gladiator and to represent and uh, to to fill that role. Um, I mean, everything we did was fun over there. Always fun. Always field trips. Always always stuff to do. Um, to your I, point, always. I love the way the teachers engaged with us, and I love the way that you know they were they were about us. It was a prep school. You know, you, you guys can do yeah. really great life. You guys, you know. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they had 20, 20 students to one teacher at best. I don't know. I, I'm guessing at that number, but but yeah, no. The, there's always been a lot of good value that the teachers uh, raised, and you know, it, it's a, it's our childhood. So a lot of our growing um, moments started there, or establishing ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, it was it was so amazing to be this culture where Craig Beck was from Arkansas. He spoke excellent Italian, Vicentino, and German. You know, and Jimmy Zacchino was like me. His mom was from Naples. My mom's from, we had a lot of similarities. Yeah. You know, he spoke German and you guys would all go skiing together. You know, Hank, who could be kind of cumbersome and clumsy, but put that motherfucker on skis. Man, I heard great stories about how amazing he was as a skier. You know, it's like these, these yeah. elements of people that, you know, we, we had something great. And I, I think we all kind of knew that. I remember asking Mr. Akeem once, you're a doctor. How come you don't go by Dr. Hakeem? And he said, because it'd be stupid. Hakeem means doctor. <laughs> and I laughed at him and I was like, oh. And I was like, well, you know, you, you work with Motherwell. You knew George O'Keefe. You were, you know, my dad was an artist. So, you know, those things kind of meant something to me. And yeah. he's like, yeah, you know, and I was like, well, why are you teaching high school? And he goes, because this is the greatest group of kids. You guys are young and malleable still. And you know, once you get to college, you kind of have your mindset on things. And He's like, you know, I want you, I want to help you guys develop into the best you can be. And I was like, damn, you know, we had Mrs. Ferguson that, that year. She was a, yeah. one of the first women NASA engineers. Yeah, she was awesome. Her high school goes, yeah, and she played Dungeons and Dragons with kids. You know, she was like, she's she like, if amazing. you don't want to be here, go do something in life. You know, that kind of yeah. sense, like, we can do anything, but they're going to give us the best you're going to get. And they did. You know, yeah. you got kids who are coming from school from Georgia, you know, kids who, whose families like Kelly Martin's family 
they weren't military brats. Her mom married a military guy and they all end up in the military and they get stationed in Vicenza, Italy. And, you know, he's just a young cook. And, you know, they're all here from Georgia. That's where they came from. And they, you know, from Jersey is where she was before that. And I was like, they didn't, they didn't have the education we have. But man, that Kelly was a smart girl. She's yeah. still a very smart woman. That gave her so much fuel. She did accelerate it in school. Uh, and I don't think she would have had that opportunity otherwise. You know, no, that's yeah. a good point. There's a, the unique uniqueness of being Vicenza, that the small uh, school gave you a lot of opportunities. Jamie Anson and I talked about that. Uh, you know, we get we get an opportunity and it builds us into who we are. Um, it's it's true. Um, man, yeah, we're, we're you're, you're covering a lot of bases in there. Um, you know. Um, so I'm just trying to think of, of uh, like who, who did you go to prom with or did you go to prom? Huh. Uh, I went to prom with Kelly Martin, obviously. I went to prom with Deborah Norwood one year. It was her senior year. And she was like, you know, she wanted to go with somebody and her and I were friends. And so I took her to, to, uh, to uh, the prom. What else did I go with? I don't remember who else I went with. My freshman year, I think. Maybe Deborah freshman year, sophomore year. I was already dating Kelly. Maybe I don't remember. <laughs> nice. But yeah, those two I remember. Yeah, proms. Those were always interesting. Um, what about what? If, okay, uh, favorite. I like. I'm doing kind of repetitive stuff just for fun. But um, favorite, favorite, um, favorite memories about the Vicenza movie theater. Like, what movie did you go and see ten times over? Oh, God, dude. <laughs> it was right before I joined the Navy. <laughs> Damn, look at that look at that uh, <laughs> yeah so jamie and so i have to say that we had a unique experience being in vicenza when um oh shit was when platoon came out i don't know if you went to see platoon at the movie theater i don't that, I remember seeing it i just don't remember where or what was my first dude the, there would be grown fucking men weeping in the theater because they had been in vietnam and it was a, it was a real a real thing for them they were really feeling what had happened because that movie was so on mm -hmm. uh, well, i think man. that was one of the most interesting i was like wow it was really deep you know you're just like holy shit this is grown men now you're yeah. these kids are you know they were sergeants you know first sergeants and seems to be hold on sorry a second it's gone yeah baby city living <laughs> No, so yeah, yeah, I, okay, so yeah, those are good choices. It's funny. So JD said the same thing about Top Gun. Jamie Anson, same thing about Top Gun. Yeah, <laughs> I said uh, Ghostbusters. Um, Ghostbusters is nice. <laughs> they, like James Cameron and I, I think, went and saw it like five times in one day, which is just like wow. I mean, to be starving for that kind of content. <laughs> It was like five bucks to get it, wasn't it? It was like, it was like 250 plus, like, if you had five bucks, you could buy everything they had to eat there. Which right. was, and we had sneak beer and food. booze in there, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, my uh -huh. other favorite memory was we would, it was like our senior, junior, senior for sure, but we'd all go to the food court, to the, to the food mall, whatever it was, and we'd go sit there, we'd order popcorn, and we'd dump it out in the thing. And we just started ordering beers. We had been in senior year. And Matt and McGordo and I would meet up. And like Massimo Yoshida, New Bank, Skippy, they'd all kind of come yeah. and go. At the same yeah. time. But Matt and I would help each other on our homework. He was terrible at English. I was terrible at math. And so <laughs> we'd be drinking. By the time, you know, we finished our homework, we had tons of beer already gone. You know, Heineken was like two bucks. Remember that? It was like so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Cost of living was the best. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, that was something else. And, you know, my dad was an E9. It's not like we had a fortune, but man, it was a lira. It was like two to one. Right. It went well. It went over very well. Okay. And favorite, remember, favorite, favorite Italian food. I know. I mean, I know you go back more often than others. Well, without being a Roman, because <laughs> I would have to say, you know, <laughs> favorite Italian food, like Roman food, like those dishes, the carbonara or uh, cacio e pepe, matriciana, those pastas, of course. Uh, there's so many good foods in Italy. Gelato. Dimmi. Gelato, yeah. I like gelato. Dude, the chocolate. Good chocolate, man. It's in Piemonte. They have some amazing chocolates. I like the beer. <laughs> somehow I knew you'd say beer. Just somehow I knew that. 
Let, let me see if I can actually find that. Um, yeah. Aspetta un attimo. Uh, minchia, se ci posso trovare. Oh, Monteberico. How can you forget Monteberico? I know, that's a good point. We haven't talked about Monteberico. Dimmi. God, that was, that was fun days. You know, fun nights. Like I said, you know, you would, you would roll up to Monteberico and there would be your other friends there on another side of it, drinking and hanging out. You know, you could be like, Oh, cool. And you could go over there and hang out and just bullshit. And then, like, in the summer when all the kids are getting, you know, they graduate. I remember uh, Lita Floda? Yeah. I remember her coming back that year. We were hanging out. It was so cool hanging out with her. Like, I didn't hang out with her much in high school, but she finished college and she came back and I was still there and we were hanging out a lot. And, you know, all the different friends that you were, like, meeting up, <laughs> you know. Even though you were friends before, you, you just met them in a different light. It was cool. Yeah, no. I... Butch, Butch Lewis went to his funeral. Matt, Matt and I and uh, Craig Beck. That, that, was, that, was a tough, that was a tough one. I bet. He was yeah. young. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's fair to say. It's, there's a lot of, um, not, you know, not all roses. Um, happy roses. Well, I Maybe can't find the bridge parties. Those are those are epic. That's that's where it was for you, huh? Okay. You know, where else can you fucking light huge yeah. bonfires underneath the highway and nobody fucks with you? <laughs> you drink all day, you hang out, people will come and go all the time. And, you know, you go out all day and hang, do your old thing, and you buy a bunch of beers for nothing. You know, and then go out and just yeah, you know, it's funny. We could have got, uh, Skippy might have had it on his phone. No, he was on his phone, so he may not have known how to share. But he had a, that picture I was telling you about of, of you. But, okay, um, just kind of, you know, let's let's think about kind of bringing this to closure. But keep in mind, I'm going to do the same thing I do with, with others. Uh, if there's a drive-by, I'll try to do the same, you know. So oh, yeah. with the other groups of people, you'll know that it's like, I may not tell you who you're coming into, but you might be like, oh my God, like you haven't seen Skippy in 30 years. I mean, let's, let's, yeah. I'll do the it's same for you. Fantastic seeing Skippy. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. And, and, and that's and, another thing. We, no matter how long time passes, you just, you just connect immediately. You know, you just, yeah, pick up that thing thought. about us. And, yeah. you know, there's something else that I've been working on. I'm not having that time, but I want to write a book. And I already have the title rats with an exclamation mark i want to write about what we did and i would love anybody's suggestions anybody's stories send them to me i mean obviously it would probably be sent about 86 90 but of course you can add any story you want to into it uh, but i would definitely love to hear from people and how they're doing and my email address is jancing at gmail.com easy enough my last name at gmail and you know i i'm always happy to hear yeah. from anybody from the chance whether i knew them or not you know all right, so before we, we go, um, you, you have a genie in a bottle, you got one wish, it's gotta be Italy. You have a choice, you can, you can, you can twist it any way you want. You can say, I wanna go back in time. Uh, I don't want, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna give you too many ideas, but you got that one wish it, and it kinda, in a sense, will uh, culminate what you, what Italy or Vicenza or whatever, what is it and where, where, what does it look like? I, I wish I didn't have to leave so early. I wish I would have been able to stay and hang out longer and connect more with friends. If I would, have, if I didn't have to go to the to the Navy for those four years, I would have had some time to sort of focus and, and with that backing, my friends, I think I would have been more connected and, and not have been so distant. Yeah, no, it's a good point. You have so much joy in Vicenza that the disruption or that that joy is gone and all that that you remember before that joy came back in one way or another or the slate is clean you start it all over yeah I, yeah yeah the adjusting part to world reality and and so forth some of us have to have it a lot harder than others but um you know it doesn't matter it's how it feels to you and uh, right yeah. you make a good point about what that what that felt like to you and, and how how you decided to follow um, but you know, one of my, like, you, one of my first friends, best friends in the Navy was my first friend. She's like, why do you dress like a girl? Because I had Benetton clothes. <laughs> uh, 
No, know, but I mean, you're right. And that, I mean, in, in in and of itself, it had it, it has its own joy, making new friends and bonding, and you know. Start, but but you're right. It's hard to give up what what Vicenza gave or gifted yeah. you. And that's it was in Naples or Livorno or all. Oh, I have a friend from Brindisi. He went to high school in Brindisi. Who lives here, and he knew a girl that I was dating from Brindisi when we were on a wrestling trip that we connected, which was weird, you know. And he knew the guy. Well, so, you know, small it's world. Small world, yeah. And All Sean, right. thank you so much for doing this. This is a fantastic thing to do and it's great to connect with people. And you know, you you're one of those you and your brother are like the the shaker makers that keep things going and <laughs> yeah, uh, my, my my pleasure. And I'm I'm glad. I'm glad we got Skippy on here to add a little extra joy. And I'm really glad you. I got to see you in Italy. That was and meet your yeah. wife. Yeah, it, it will come again. I, I can't not. I, look, when COVID's gone and everything's settled or whatever, I don't really need to go anywhere else. I don't, and no bucket list matters. It's like I, I've already traveled. This is where I want to go, and this is where I want to go and, and share more with my, my wife and, and my son. It's just, there's no, I, I mean, I have a hard time thinking about, you know, you may have seen these, you know, buy a, a an Italian whatever apartment for a dollar and then you have to fix it up for oh, yeah. 20 for grand. I, I mean you know I don't mind the idea at all but I don't know how how remote it's going to be and uh, not you know look living in Italy for me I love it inside and out but I don't know that I could stick calling that my retirement home when my real world spins over here wherever yeah. you know my son is and, and my wife and it's just kind of oh, a, you, you made a life for yourself you know and yeah but but i need them to see more of it you know time time is short time is flying by and uh, there uh, comes a time when there's no more time Twenty more years we're freaking lucky oh uh, well yeah and i think i think to your point i i'm not i mean it's just look i i i'm i'm looking for hitting the 80s but um for all intents and purposes it's um you blink and like you and skippy haven't talked in 30 years 30 stinking years you don't talk to a man yeah. but the minute you see him even on a video you're like <laughs> yeah you, you're you, the both of you are going to be buzzing you're going to be happy as can be high as a kite today just remembering and this energy that you're feeling will continue i, I have it too look i'm not i'm not oh yeah, weird, yeah. you know but sure but I, I look forward to sharing in this and um, and and to your point the 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 bridging gap here is potentially that Lenny's you know doing the podcast with people in his age bracket range school years whatever yeah. and I'm doing these but I do plan on doing a couple other themes I mean the formats we can do whatever we want but I, I'd like to kind of do something coach related coaches related. Um, Definitely, especially for Drax passing and your father, you know. Mr. Richie, Mr. Pellerito. Yeah. I'm not trying to Fuck exclude me. anybody. Yeah. yeah, well, he's still here. But but to your yeah, point, I mean, it would be nice to, you know, it, it's a matter of timing and, and how to put it together. Mm -hmm. But, like, there are, there are gifts from people out there. And I, I have a funny feeling that my brother kicked this off um, just at random, per se. Uh, and... Um, I don't think it was random. I'm sorry. I think it's it, there was recently a um, sorry back tangent. Let's go. Let's go out a bit to come back. Right, right. Um, there was somebody reaching out to say, you know, who who's who? Who are these people? You know, Vicenza super people. You know, who who you know names of some kind. And I threw down like five names right away and shared them. Um, just, of, just people you know and potential roles in life and so forth that have been, uh, you know, whatever focus determined and have done well. And again, not an exclusion. It was just a quick, easy, here's, right. here's some names. It'll, it'll build from there, right? It just... Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was nice to see about four out of the five that I put out there um, were selected and or chose to give permission to be presentable as a Vicenza person. So again, to the goal of being proud of where you come from, but now to be fair, I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are doing very well accomplished and so forth in life. And, and what I mean by that is by personal goals or, you know, I don't, I don't really care about the wealth factor. Um, I care to say, you know, look, there are a lot of good people that came through Vicenza and it was nice to see that list. Um, but what was 
what was nice about the thing too is you got to imagine there's a process and people are vetting and contacting and can we have you? Will you be a part of it? Do you have a picture or so forth? And that's great. Um, aspirations for others. But one of the nice comments out there, a gift, I call it, but it's like a, a gentleman by the name of Frankie Ponce and, and by who? Uh, Frankie Ponce. He, he's a, he's been around Vicenza. He's a, he's an, a, a bygone of an other era. Um, I didn't know him. I mean, he's, you know, I probably was, uh, you know, this, you know, little three foot tall guy at the time. Um, but he was around in the era when my father uh, created the, uh, with, with the best team, or, or teams or talent, where they had the longest undefeated basketball um, uh, track for like five years, they were undefeated, I think is the story. Um, and, and, and that's a story of its own. But but anyway, he remembered those days and so forth. But I don't, the, the comment that he put out there was simply, look, you know, I don't know what the scale is for the accomplishments of the people that were selected here, but, you know, Lenny Dempsey is someone that should be on this list for everything he did, the values, the, you know, the selflessness and so forth. And it was, you know, I may be reading into whatever, you know, the depth the detail, but he's somebody who over the long courses of time here has been a stranger to my brother and I, but has been a gift by what he's shared or chosen to share about the uh, era, the bygone era and, and the gifts that he's given us. So I think in, in general, I, I like to give him some credit because I think he, he gave a catalyst to, to us to, to kind of do this. Now, you know, I'm sure there are folks out there that, you know, have a different spin, a different twist on how this whole thing looks or how it should be or who should be next. But in truth, it's, we're, we're, you know, I, I have a collection of people that I'd love to look and connect with and, and, and share those stories. Uh, so, Absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think of everybody. I don't remember everybody. That wasn't my goal as an ambassador of Vicenza. Right. But, you know, it's just kind of like, Hey, I have a life uh, and, and I'm dedicating a little bit much to this, I think, but it's the euphoria. It's the joy yeah. of, of sharing with Vicenza. And, and look, Brian, I mean, you've been in three of the podcasts, whether you liked it or not. And um, it's a gift to, to know what you're doing and to share, because I think for people, um, you. you're going to find that when we publish this and people listen to the story and they find the commonalities, they're not just going to do that. We're, we're going to definitely put the, we have to put the links of the tours and the book and so forth so that it's something that people can go, I didn't know that, and now I do, and I'd like to have a part yeah. of it, so. I, I always want to hear from somebody from Vicenza and what they're doing, you know? I mean, David Richmond finished the military, you know? And Marcus Leonard is still working out like an animal. Yeah, He's like three miles, five miles a day, even in the heat. It's just, you know, they, they, those are things that were impassioned by your dad, by so many people yeah. you know what i mean and yeah and, and just sidebar i want to do um it's a bit of fun but and, and it may be difficult to coordinate but there was that there's a there's definitely different groups and, and and so forth over the years but i'd like to do the slam of jamas which would relate to david richman marcus leonard tyrone mccall who's an incredible man oh yeah is. he was a yeah he was like a man amongst kids and even today he's doing some neat stuff he's just a genuine great good man you know and, uh, Howard Wilson, he still lives here. Harold. Harold uh, Wilson, he lives here, but I haven't seen him yet. I try to connect with him. We keep missing each other. So I, mean, I think he's in Aurora, but that's who I like to find. He, yeah. he was the one who taught me how to play football, the position. He really? didn't understand what a fullback has to do. He's he was, a coach, and he was a great yeah. athlete, man. That guy was huge. Yeah. Harold Harold is a is a wonderful soul and I love Harold know, and and I don't think I think it'll be a gift for him to get a part of this Vicenza uh, you know coming back feel I, I hope it comes to be I, I know that it doesn't always happen not everybody gets the chance to connect like the rockets fly and you miss yeah, right, right. but but he was a gift and uh, he was so funny he was <laughs> gentleman he was nice and caring. I love those people I love, he, and, I, love I remember is he used to say. Give me some cooch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me some cooch. It just, it, it was like a sidebar of everything he had to say. Hey, how you doing? Give me some cooch. <laughs> Jeroni. 
<laughs> so you, you want a sports story? I'll make it quick. Go ahead. Naples, sure. we're, on the, we're headed for football games. We're going to Naples. And Howard Jones, Taroni! Taroni! And out of nowhere, some guy stands up. We're stuck in Travis Sky. He's like, ah. Oh. He reaches, comes out with his gun, waves it. <laughs> we all drop to the ground like, dude, Harold, stop that shit. <laughs> oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> well, Brian, always good to talk to you. I know Great we, we, we you, maintain uh, and we'll continue, but thank you for coming on and giving them thank the time. You. And uh, we'll publish this, you know, in the near future. Um, after a lot Where of Where do we go to find this? Editing. It's, it's on Facebook and, and YouTube. Um, subscribe. Click the button here. Um, yeah, no, so we created a group. I think, you know, I, I'm guessing you haven't been on Facebook in a bit, but um, that's one place. But on YouTube, you can just type in uh, VHS podcast and you'll find um, uh, the channel. And there's about four or five of them and, cool. and more coming. So, so that's where, and I'll, I'll send it to you nonetheless, but, um, you know. Well, thank you for doing this. I look forward to hearing from anybody who gets on here. If and you know, I'll keep bringing people up if I think of them. There's always a lot, and you you start to think a little bit more. You're like, I know somebody we yeah. need to talk to. Good, good. Ciao, a presto. Thank Ciao, you. Ciao. Ciao, VHA. I'll see you soon, Cougars. <laughs>